So excited to have Yuri Dene here for episode six. Uh, Yuri is the owner and founder of the Pilpel brand and restaurants in central East London. Pilpel now has six locations and has just passed their 10 year anniversary, correct? Correct. Yeah, as of May 2019. I did my homework. I did my homework. When, you, when the falafel is this good, you have to do your homework. Thank you, sir. <laughs> um, and all of this is possible because uh, of the vision that Yuri had to, of letting more people taste his grandfather's delicious falafel recipe. Yuri, welcome to the show. Thank you nice. so much for being here and taking the time to share your story and insights. We're really looking forward to this. I've been tricked. I didn't know they would put a camera on me. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> and this isn't getting edited out yeah. because I think it's just right blindsided him. <laughs> yeah, but let's, let's, let's keep going. Let's see, let's see what's going to happen. For okay. Yeah. Um, so, look, Pill Pal started in May 2009. And obviously there was a lot of background work that went into the whole process of getting to that stage of starting your first location. But... Let's start with what you were doing before PillPal. What was life like I before PillPal started? I was a sales manager for a food company okay. that used to distribute hummus okay. all over the UK. When I started working there for Tesco's and Sainsbury's, when I started working there, we, we used to do one container a month. Okay. When I finished working there, we did maybe 15 containers a month. Oh, wow. So the hummus, in the hummus trend exploded and I just loved it and uh, I did it, that's it, that's what I was doing. Okay, so then how did you go from selling hummus to deciding, okay, I'm going to go for my first restaurant? One day, I crossed the road, I went to work, I was in Amsterdam Garden suburb in between two customers and I crossed the road and a car hit me at 40 miles an hour. It hit you? Yeah. Oh and wow. And I woke up in the hospital. Nothing ideally happened to me, except that I lost my short-term memory. And I don't remember, I don't remember that an helicopter took me to the hospital. I just remember waking up in the hospital, trying to get up. My boss was next to me. I told him, what am I doing here? He told me, oh, you had an accident. I told him, okay, let's go and smoke a ciggy. I was connected to lots of machines. And I told him, he told me, no, no, you cannot. No, no, don't worry, they need to check it. I told him, don't worry, I ripped the machines out of me. I've tried to get up, I couldn't. I all the fucking post that was connected to my arm. We went out, we smoked a ciggy. And that's where it all started. This is when I started asking myself, why am I living for? What's the purpose of my life? And I asked myself if I would be, I had the best job in the world. I was literally doing nothing. I was drinking five, six cups of coffees a day. Mm -hmm. My customers used to trust me with my eyes closed. I, I could sit at home and do all my ordering at home. But I asked myself if in 20 years time I would look backwards and I would be happy with my life story. And the answer was no. So as soon as the answer would no, I asked myself, what do I want from life? What is life? And I understood that life is very simple. You're born one day and you die another day. And in between there is a pathway. And in that pathway you have to fulfill yourself. You have to be, you have to experience as much as you can. And my experience was that I want, I love excitements. So I asked myself, okay, what excites me? And I, I was an entrepreneur in nature. All my life I did stuff, but all my life I chased money. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be a success because I wanted to prove to this person or to prove to this person or to prove to everybody that I'm, that I'm, a, that there is something there, that I'm not stupid as everybody thought as a kid, that I'm dyslexic and, okay. and uh, a failure and all the teachers said that I would be or a drug dealer or a gangster. <laughs> uh, so I wanted to prove everybody. Then I said, fuck everybody. <laughs> what feeds me? And then I decided that excitement feeds me. And I asked myself what excites me. Uh, I was a DJ as a kid. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, I cannot be a DJ now, it's too late. Uh, so I said, okay, business excites me. And then my grandfather wanted to retire. None of his kids wanted to sell falafel because there was too cocky and they said, I don't fucking do that, I would not do that. So I said, fuck it, I'll do that. I had 10,000 pound to my name. Uh, I was starting searching for a shop. And slowly, slowly it happened with lots of belief. Lots of, there is a beautiful sentence that I follow for years of Albert Einstein. Imagination, it's everything. It is the preview of life coming attractions. And I visualize what I want to achieve and blindfolded I run towards my target 
and step by step it happened and that's that's the beginning of Pilpa. that's the beginning of Pilpa. by the way if you uh if you're living in central london or even if you're outside of london and you've not heard of Pilpa, or you've not tried it get yourself down to one of the stores don't believe him it's not, it's not that good because <laughs> it is the best falafel it's I've not ever that had. good zero expectation come and try it <laughs> if you like it hallelujah way too modest absolutely incredible falafel thank you honestly. so much thank you so um much. so wow so you literally started with you had the accident you survived nothing too major uh just lost my memory my short memory, memory and i was i was fucked on my head for three months well, that's a blessing. It uh, was a blessing. That there was nothing else that happened, which is no. Well, and it in a way, my life. Let's say that's the starting point. That was a catalyst for everything else that happened onwards, right? This is when I decided that I don't care what others think of me, and I think that my greatest talent is that I do not give a fuck about what anybody thinks of me. I think about my journey and about my life, and I just want to fulfill myself, and that's it. On the way, I will try to be as good as I can and help as much as I can. But I just want to get as more emotional, as in much more interesting life stories that I can because probably I'm 40 years old. I got, if I'm lucky, I got another 40 years to live. And when I'll check out, I want to check out uh, fulfilled and happy with my journey. That's it. Simple. Okay, so uh, let's go back a second because you said that um, you know your grandfather was selling falafel and no one else in the family wanted to help him and he was looking to retire as well. Yeah. Um, where was that happening and how did you decide okay that's the thing that's gonna make me fulfilled after the accident as i said uh, i was thinking what i'm going to do and uh, well i forgot what i wanted to say jump to my head this is you will add it but uh, after the accident i was thinking what i wanted to do and obviously uh, when nobody wanted to do the falafel thing and uh, i s asked myself what would fulfill me and I thought that this is something that I can actually relate to and enjoy. And even until today, I will, if you will come with me at lunchtime and I will sit and see the queues at lunch, those massive queues and the people happy and smiling and I go like an idiot and I give falafels and make a joke out of myself and I will stand on the side and I will cry like a baby. So I knew it will get emotional for me and I knew it will touch me. And I think that's why, that's the reason I did what I did. And so where was your grandfather selling in Tel Aviv? So you did in you go back there to learn from him? I worked for my granddad when I was 13, 14, 15 years old. Wow. I was, yeah, I was serving falafel. That's, that's the thing that I know how to do best in my life. I don't know how to do anything else. I'm very good at just making falafels. And nobody planned that people will become a chain of six. People do not have investors. We don't have any bank loans. Everything happened organic. What happened, happened, happened. If a good location will come, I'll take it. This is why people drive me mad. Open here, open there. And I wish I could. But if one day my company will become a corporate company, or I will shoot myself, or I would leave it. <laughs> because then I'm not going to enjoy it anymore. Because then it's not what you built up organically, no. right? No, I've got a family of 75 people that I love each and one of them. Love each and one of my employees. Thanks to them, Pilpel is what Pilpel is. Thanks to Pilpel, people like you. The customers helped me keep my grandfather's legacy alive. And it's a very emotional thing for me. And I love it. The last time I woke up and went to work was 11 years ago. Wow. I'm an unemployed. That's how I feel and someone paying me to do what I do. And I think that every single person should be that way. He should find what drives him, what he loves, what, what he got passion for, and fuck the money, exactly what you do. And as soon as you do not care about the, in, the outcome, yeah, you will, f you will get, the outcome is what you do now. If you enjoy what you do now, for me, that's the outcome already. Which is always what the result is and people just don't realize it maybe straight away. If you're waiting for the result, if you're doing something, one plus one, to look for the equal of two, normally you would never get. For my life experience, I've tried so many businesses, I was waiting to make money and I never made money. As soon as I didn't care about money, yeah, and I cared about just, to be alive mm -hmm. and that my business will survive that works and survive and I didn't care this is when I start making money if I'm taking let's say if you see where I live you will be in shock I live in a small warehouse conversion my light at home it's candlelights yeah I'm a very spiritual person 
It's like my business partner, I have a business partner that helped me. Without him, nothing will happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that he believed in me that nobody else did. That I wanted to sign a lease on the shop. Nobody wanted to give me, nobody wanted to let me sign on a 15 years lease. I didn't have any security. So he really believed in me and he signed a, f a, a personal guarantee and he started the first journey with me. And since then, he's, he's my, is the blessing that's how i see him is the blessing in the story awesome so let's go um let's go super practical because uh yes. just a couple of minutes ago you said that you had nothing but ten thousand pounds to your name yeah now how did that start like what did you do with that ten thousand i lost them yeah i lost them before if you said the first shop was uh people brushville street mm -hmm. 38 brushville street yeah before 38 brushville street I was the two the two shop next door 32 Brushfield Street was under offered by me okay now it was too big to my shoes uh, it was I reckon 40,000 pound rent 100,000 pound premium this is when I approached my existing business partner to join me it was under offer uh, we had another partner on the go because it was too expensive uh, it was into solicitors we did everything moves quite smoothly each one of them put 100k in the account i had 200k in an account never saw this amount of money in my life 200k a day before signing the contract the day before i find in that the shop don't have license for food the shop is a1 it's not an a3 oh, and i've been promised that the shop is a3 and i put the 10 percent uh, the ten thousand pound as a ten percent for the rent deposit to guarantee the place for me and I've, at night i was crying like a baby i didn't know what to do i talked with my best friend and asked him what would you do my best friend is a very successful business businessman back home and he told me Uri, nobody ever will give you 200k yeah and leave it in your account sign the lease yeah and cope afterwards and deal with the consequences after i could not do it as a person so i woke up in the morning i told to my business partner the situation and what happened that we cannot sign the lease and i gave the money back and luckily the next door was uh, under offer by preta manger okay and pret uh, and they had she had the shop had an a3 and pret pulled out and it was without any premium. So I saved 100K. The other business partner didn't want to join, the third one. Yep. And my business partner said, oh, fuck it, go for it. And we went for it. And the rest is history. I didn't plan, seriously, I didn't plan to have a chain of six. I didn't plan to sit in the seat where I'm sitting. It was not planned. Wow. Seriously, I was serving falafel and I was literally happy with it. That is amazing. So. I mean, that's an intense thing to go through, especially when you put down your heart and soul. Uh, yeah, your life savings are now on the line, and then you find out that actually that location didn't have the licensing you needed. And not only is your money gone, but people who have invested, you're worried about their money as well. No, no, I just gave them the and money just back. I just gave them the money back. They asked for the money back. I sent them the money back to their accounts, and literally the night after. I found out a shop, we put an offer, and it started running. So I think, I think when you're honest, and you're, not try, you're honest with yourself, things, and you're good with others, good things will happen to you. Things work out. Yeah, always, always, always look at the bright side, all of, always be positive. Again, when you're fulfilled, I believe that happiness and, happiness and difficulties, I think it's, it's moments and while you fulfill with your path and what do you do to be happy it's a moment or to be sad it's a moment and you should get take both of them with grace and love both mm -hmm. i think that from your tough moments you learn much more from your happy moment you learn shit yeah you just enjoying it mm -hmm. so i think the tough moments in a person's life it's the best school that he would ever have definitely so let's go to your business partner Please. how did you find your business partner i knew two years before Okay. Before I started Pilpel, he didn't knew, he didn't even wanted to do a falafel, he didn't care about it. I told to my mom two years before, if I'm doing anything, it's only with this guy. Okay. And he was one of my customers okay. in my previous job. 
from the hummus delivery from the hummus. yeah it was okay. by, it was he had, he had he got few shops yeah five shops and i knew for fact he's the one that i will do something with him i could choose people that would actually help me more and they would walk physically uh, but i knew that it would be him and i took him to the how it works that one time i took him to the shop and he told me he didn't want to really but then i convinced him and he said okay you got my blessing and then i drove i dropped him home and i told him Biosi, please don't waste my time if you give me your blessing please he's a religious person if you give me your blessing please don't waste my time he told me oh now you got my blessing now ask the blessing from above and uh, that's it the rest is history seriously i promised him when i came to open my second shop uh, he came and told me oh you don't need me anymore yeah carry on by yourself and i said whatever i'll do in life i'll offer you 50 percent of it and that's and been the deal from the start that since now then we yeah. open another we have another company that's called badolina okay uh, that we have two shops and he's a business partner a 50 percent shareholder and then we have another company that's called schnitzmi that is a shareholder and yeah, yeah. It's, just it's just been working well together for the two of you he doesn't involve he just give me love <laughs> he stress me when i'm too relaxed he, he, he give me love and relaxes me when i'm too stressed that's it he's giving you the balance he's giving me that i love him to bits <laughs> i love him to bits seriously okay brilliant so let's uh let's go on to the fact that you've been in business now for 10 years with pill Pal. you've yes. got other things that are running now as well as a result of this yeah uh, but obviously this has been pretty successful i would say yeah um for the last 10 years to now have six locations yeah. uh without any uh kind of corporation behind it without any huge loans behind it or anything like that so what has been the key factors to you succeeding to what you have right now? Don't try and be a businessman from the first day you open your business. You're a fucking donkey, my friend. And be a donkey and wake up in the morning and walk 70, 80, 90 hours. Love what the fuck you do. Every customer is the most important one. You don't take a salary because you cannot afford it. Because it's like a baby, a baby that's just born. Yeah, you need to give him love. You need to support him. You cannot drink from your baby. Do you understand? For example, today I'm helping my mom. But I could not help my mom when I was six or five or four years old. Mm -hmm. She needed to help me. That's a business. Don't feed your ego and drive a Mercedes because you made some money. Yeah, eat shit, work hard, and it will benefit. Now, you cannot work hard if you don't love what you do. If you're doing it for the end results to, to, to think what the other person thinks of you, you will go and buy a Mercedes. Mm -hmm. And you will go and take a huge mortgage. Mm -hmm. And no, I didn't care about it. I care about feeding every single person. That's what I cared. Simple. And I think that's what made people grow. Look, my, f my second location, I'll tell you a story. Go for it. My second location was in St. Paul's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've seen a unit in St. Paul's, an amazing unit that I don't know why my belly told me that I want that unit. I found, no, sorry, we cannot give it to you. No, sorry, we cannot give it to you. More than 50 times I got no. More than 50 times I got no. After 50 times, they give up and they said, okay, let's organize you a meeting. They organized me a meeting with the London Stock Exchange, that are the occupants of the building, with Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi Bank, the director of Mitsubishi Bank, that they are the landlords, mm -hmm. and a few agents and the managing agents. Now, before, three months before that, I was serving at Bashville Street at the location, and I saw a very old lady at the end of the queue. A very very old lady and not normal around 75 years old mm -hmm. and this old lady we I was serving so fast because I wanted to serve her I didn't understood what she's doing in the queue I got to a point that I'm actually serving the unit I stop because we're serving very fast if you came at lunchtime yeah. so I stop everything and ask her madam what are you doing here and she said I came all the way from West London to eat your food and I got here I'm telling you now I'm getting emotional and I made her a food, I didn't have time, I made her the food, she went to the till, I told to the till lady, no, 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 it's okay, I'm paying for it. And she didn't understand, and I said, darling, don't worry, you already pay for it by taking your time and commuting from where you commute to eat the food. A week later, I'm getting a letter. 
I'm just opening the letter, it's all in those connected handwriting that I'm fucking dyslexic, I cannot read it. So I was looking at that and I could not read it. I, I called my ex, that she's English, and I told mm-hmm. her, hey, Tash, can you please come and read it for me, please? She came and read it for me and it was a very, very touchy letter about a lady, 75 years old lady that got a cancer uh, uh, and probably she will die from that cancer and she don't have appetite to eat any food and she discovered Pilpel and it reminds her, wow, and it reminds her her family and, and her father cooking and she's so grateful and I really touched her with what I did. I sent her plenty of freebies and I told her from now on Pilpel it's hers and she's part of the family. And she used to come every month, so she never took the mickey, she used to come every couple of weeks and it's yeah. for free and everybody knew her in my shops. And anyway, then I got to the meeting that I needed to get to the meeting. Yeah. Now everybody expected a presentation. It's like I was sitting with 10 people that wear suits, <laughs> all looking at me, I cannot wear a suit. I was sweating my ass off, all <laughs> nervous. And I was addressing the people and I was telling them about the story of Pilpel and why the Pilpel, blah, blah, and all the story. And afterwards, they asked me, what did you open, what you open? So I took her letter out, I brought reviews with me, I didn't have any presentation, so I took yep. the letter that she gave. And I said, I opened Pilpil because of that. So they asked me to read the letter. And obviously I could not read the letter, I'm the fucking dyslexic. So I tell them, look, if I will read the letter, I will burst in tears, so I cannot read it. So the, the, the manager, not the manager, the agent of the property said, okay, we don't, don't care about it. And the director of Mitsubishi Bank said, no, 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 I want to read the letter. And he sat and read the letter for three minutes. And every, all the room was quiet. He finished the letter, he moved it to his associate, and he read the letter, and he asked from every single person to read the letter. After everybody wrote the letter, he stood up, and he asked the agent, would you give this guy the property? And obviously in a nice English way, they would not say no, or they would not say yes. She said, mm, I think we need to think about it. No, 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 please answer me direct. Would you give this gentleman the property? Um, I don't know, we need to think if it's the right occupants. The guy looked in my hand, he shook my hand and told me it would be a privilege of me to have you as my tenant. Wow. And that's how people number two open. So I do believe <laughs> that, and this is what life are for. That's exactly the story that I told you that get me emotional and touch me so much that I will never forget it in my life. Mm-hmm. That thanks to this lady, I've got one of, more, one of most of my successful shops. Yeah, and it's just incredible. And I believe that all the story through the way with my staff that are like my family and I've got, we, I got tens of those stories that touching me. We are building school in Africa now. Wow. Yeah. Not me. One of my, one of my staff that is actually from Senegal is building a school in Africa that Pilpel is, uh, that Pilpel is actually founding. And not for any fucking, uh, I, I don't want nobody to know about it. I don't care. Mm-hmm. I ju- it just feeds me. I know that I will go in three months to Africa and I will see the school almost finished and I will see this kid that fucking begged to be able to go to school himself is actually addressing all his village and is an ear of goosebumps in his skin and me standing on the side knowing that I'm the one that planted the seed for that to happen. So more than that you cannot ask in life. And that's what it's about. That I mean, that level of fulfillment yeah. Yeah. is huge. I love the story about the uh, Thank you. the way you got St. Paul's. Thank and I've, I've been in that queue. Yeah. I, I've, I love that because uh, it's the only restaurant in that street that has a queue that splits in three when you go inside. And outside, yeah. And then comes outside as one and then an L shape yeah. all the way down. So I think it's just a testament to... Uh, the way that you donkeyed through right from the beginning. I'm still donkeying through. And still doing it But now. I'm still donkeying through. Again, I don't see myself as a businessman. Now it's more difficult. I cannot lock my sh- myself in one shop that I really want to lock myself in a shop because I love it. I love people. That's the thing that I love most in life. I'm enjoying going to one of my shops, taking a falafel plate and just feeding the queue and taking the mickey out of myself. And everybody saying to who the fuck is this lunatic? <laughs> if you will read the review of Pilpel, all the reviews about Pilpel, mm-hmm. you will see that 50% of the review ask why our staff are so happy. Yeah. 
And I think that our staff is so happy because it's a family. For good and bad, I'm a fucking lunatic. I'm a control freak. I can eat, I can lick the floor in each one of my shops. We're spending shitloads of money. I'm doing deep cleaning every night in every shop. Okay. In every shop. If I will sell my company one day, in one day, the guy that will buy my company will make probably another 100 or 150K a year just by sucking the cleaners. I have two cleaners for every establishment that come in when the establishment is closed and doing a deep cleaning. If you come and look at each one of my ventilation, they look new and they are five or six years old, each one of them. And it's not about money. Again, it's about feed me. And the reason the food is good, because whatever you put in your mouth, whatever, if it's the tahini, the chili, the, 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 the oil that the falafel fried in, the falafel, every single item made every single morning. Every single morning. Not too much. Nothing that you put in your mouth is from yesterday. And the reason being, because I want to eat it. And I know my oil, for example, I sell my oil for 50 pound for 50p a liter mm -hmm. that they give i don't want to say but they're giving it to other more shops they're so selling they it they're reselling it, it and you're mm -hmm. using new oil one day and i'm using only sunflower oil i'm never using long life oil long life oil that all the chains using will save me probably 1000 pound a week 1500 pound a week that i don't care it's not about the money it's not I'm not fucking checking out with millions pound, with millions in my pocket. My Ferrari would not go with me to the grave. <laughs> Do you understand? So it's not about this. It's about the story that I told you. Yeah. And there's many more of those stories that I will be able to have in my life. The more fulfilled I will be. Yeah. And I'm yep. just looking for those stories, like a junkie, like an adrenaline junkie that's looking to fucking excite himself. I love crying. Love crying. I love, but not from sadness, from just. Mm. Emotional happiness. Yes. Mm. Well, fucking done. That's it. Awesome. I, I, do you know, even now, the way you're talking, the passion that comes across, oh, the emotion that comes across, you can feel it. And then there's no reason, um, there's no wonder that everyone else feels it and keeps coming back. And why your cues are so long? I think it's it my keeps, staff. I think it's my staff that feels it. But it all comes from the, the top. Idea. It all comes from the top. And that's the idea. This is why I said if my company will become corporate, I will be depressed. And me as a depressed person would never be able to do it. Every person that I interview, yeah, I tell them, look, I know it's not your dream job. Yeah, and you don't want to sell falafel for all your life. But do me a favor. If you're not happy, don't stay here. Because I would let you go. I cannot come to a place when I see someone unhappy. I'm a very sensitive person and I would feel his unhappiness and it would make me unhappy. And I will try to fix his unhappiness. Mm -hmm. And if I cannot fix his unhappiness, please leave, go elsewhere. So uh, just happy people. And just people that want to drive and just people that want, that want in their own happiness. Look, it's not easy. I think working in Pilpel, it's one of the most difficult industries to work. And I mm -hmm. tell you why, you're not making shit lots of money. Mm -hmm. You pay the bit above minimum wage. Mm -hmm. You're serving X amount of customers in two hours and you're sweating your ass off. Mm -hmm. You just bloody sweating your ass off. Or rather, if you're a waiter, you're just waiting. So I think a waiter, it's much of an easier job. And I think that to serve customers in that intense environment, as you said, three queues with queues outside, yeah, yeah. is fucking stressful. It is. And yeah. even then, I mean, we're not actually waiting for that long. It's amazing how fast your staff are. It's incredible. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. But again, it's because they want. It's not because I ask them to be. Obviously, it's part of the char characteristic of the shop mm -hmm. that I have to serve a person in X amount of time. But a person that doesn't want, he would never be. A person that want, he will be amazing. Everybody can do it. The question if you want to do it. And if you want to do it, you will be good. And I will invest. Every employee that starts to work in Pilpel, before he will serve you, mm -hmm. he would need to, to practice for two weeks before he would, let's say, he would practice for two weeks before he would give lunch. Okay. He would serve people in the evening. Mm -hmm. Uh, for the first three or four days, he will make maybe 50 containers and 50 pita breads before he will serve a customer. Gotcha. You have to go through that training. And yes, and it's a bit of a waste. I understand that. I think people would not like the waste of food. But it's part of uh, making you happy.
making the customer satisfied and making the customer happy. Awesome. And I guess it's part of, it's, well, like you said, it's the reason that the customers are well looked after. Yes, yes. And the reason, look, I'm serving you in, fair, in, in one minute, one minute twenty. Yeah? Mm -hmm. now, <laughs> now, you would, if I'm not giving you, an, if I'm not extra nice to you, yeah, and if I'm not smiling to you, and if I'm not asking you, how are you, sir? Or how are you, madam? You will feel like a five pound note. And that's illegal in my company. You cannot feel a five pound note. You have to feel uh, important and the customer can decide whatever he wants to have in his dish and as much as he wants to have in his dish. And if you've been at people at lunchtime and you heard the gong, yeah, that everybody scream SF for every free meal and uh, you've got always a lunatic that sings and shouts there. That's the idea. It's to, the idea is you guys or whoever stuck in the office in, in an environment with plenty of computers uh, basically almost living like batteries and then they come in for lunch time and it's, I feel it's a release and I have at least one to a hundred people hates it hates it it's too noisy he doesn't like it and I'm apologizing and I say I'm so sorry sir but that's uh, what Pilpil -pil is all about <laughs> and if you don't like it just move your lunch break come to it at, 12, at 2 30 or before 12 o'clock you're not gonna have this noise but for me that's what it's all about a celebration a happiness we give a show yeah that's the idea it's the show yeah and it's infectious because people love it thank you awesome thank you thank you thank you okay let's um let's go on so uh you've been in business for food for actually quite a long time even with uh your sales career beforehand that was still within food so yeah. food's been your life uh from when you were working with your grandfather yeah, yeah. when you were a yeah. teenager yeah all the way through to now so for anyone else that's listening or watching right now who might be thinking oh do you know what i really wish i could take the leap and start a food business don't <laughs> don't <laughs> don't <laughs> if you do not have the passion for it don't fucking do it so here's it my question be the worst decision you ever did in your life so here's my question if you have the passion for it yeah if you love food if yeah. you love preparing food yeah and serving it what advice do you have Go for be someone a chef. Who wants to do it? Go be a chef. Go be a chef. My mom told me something very incredible many years ago. A restaurant, it's a grave. Or it's just a grave, or it's a grave of gold. Made out of gold. So let's put it that way. Me holidays in the last 10 years, I'm not taking more than a week a year. Okay? okay. So a week a year, I will go to the sun, yeah, and I will jump to the water. Could you live with a week a year? Holiday? If I'm doing something that I love every single if day. If you love, exactly. Look at me. I'm passionate about what I do. It feeds me with energy. Yeah. I don't need that sun. My customer give me the sun. Do you understand yep. the difference? Yeah. If you're doing it because you think that you love restaurants, no problem. Go be a donkey as a chef for six months. See that you're enjoying it. Yeah. That you enjoy working 70 hours a week and it still feeds you. No, if you got the management skills to do it, and you have to be strict as fucking a mm, for a restaurant to walk and to keep your standards. Yep. And if it's something that feeds you and you see that you enjoy it, go ahead and do it. Just it's not an easy business. It's a very, very difficult business, I will say. And that level of honesty is what will I think be very valuable to everyone else that's listening. Um okay, so I've loved this story, honestly. It's amazing. Thank you. What is next for you? I don't know. For Pilpal? Any know. plans on it? Or is it just plans? like we're just taking it as it comes and if another Taking venue comes up, that's it? I, I watched an amazing video of, of some, uh, of some uh, Buddhist, a guru Buddhist, amazing video that he explained something very nice that most of humanity, okay, do you, do you believe that most people live in all in their past, what happened, why it happened, or they live in the future, correct? Mm -hmm. Now, the past does not exist. Yep. The future does not exist. Correct. Yeah. So those people, they live in the past, in the future, uh, they are uh, mentally unstable <laughs> because they live in their imagination. That's what the guy said in the video. And I think that he's absolutely right. 
live in the now, experience the now, enjoy the now. I'm enjoying this conversation mm -hmm. and I'm loving this conversation. And probably after he will go, maybe I will receive an email of someone offering me a shop. Yeah. And I will go to see the shop and uh, if it's the right shop, I, I'll put an offer. And if it's not the right shop, I'm not going to put an offer. So plans, I do not have plans. I live every day by the day that I live. Yeah, and no plans whatsoever. That's awesome. I, I love that. Um, okay. What are your... Making this a bit more generic. Please. Um, and I know you've said this a couple of times where you're not a businessman, but actually even before we started recording, you said you're not a businessman, you are an artist. Yeah, right? yeah. I painted this. I'm going to take a picture of that afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> I painted this. That's very cool. I've got plenty of paintings at home and I like... I and you are I'm an a very artist. emotional guy. And this and is I how you express no, it through I food no, and through... I think that art, I think that you are... I think that you are the main actor in your own movie. And your movie, it's your life. And I think that you should make your movie as interesting as possible for yourself simple and I think that she's an extra in your movie she's more than an extra mm -hmm. because she's your wife so she got an yeah, important yeah. part in your movie and vice versa and she has her own movie yeah, and that's where I'm exactly, an extra exactly exactly it, you just now an extra in my movie yeah and you made an interesting story yeah. and probably if there is an audience somewhere that's watching the movie so the rating is quite high now yeah that's how I see life <laughs> so each and one of us are creators mm -hmm. each and one of us are artists yeah, artists, it's a, it's a nicer way than calling yourself the, the creator. Mm -hmm. I, believe that, I believe that creation lay in each and one of us. Yep. And I believe that there is no different in each and one of us. I think that we are all one. I think that the only, even the trees and even the ants from the street. And I think that the only difference between each and one of us, it's the different body that each and one of us brought. That's, That's why I think to be very humble, uh, love everybody, Never hate because you inject the negativity into yourself and enjoy your journey. Enjoy That's your it. fucking journey. So, look, you Keep said you're, you're an artist. Yes. Yeah, you're a creator. We are all creators. We are all creators. Um. But at the same time, you've understood how to transfer that to business and to entrepreneurship. And, and if you hadn't, Pilpa wouldn't exist how it is today. Yes, let me tell you something. My friend is uh, the European journalist for the biggest newspaper in Israel. He had an interview a month ago with Richard Branson. He phoned me and he asked me, Uri, what would you ask Richard Branson? Obviously, I don't have any question for Richard, uh, but I thought what a question my friend could ask him for Richard to give him a nice interview. So I told him the first question that you ask Richard Branson is when did you understood that ful fulfillment is the way for success? And what he told me that as soon as he asked him that question, Richard gave him a 40 minutes interview rather than 10 minutes interview for the rest. Yeah. And he enjoyed the interview with him. So I think that's your answer. There you go. <laughs> Um, last question. Please, whatever you like. And I think I already know the answer. Please, but you would know. I'm what, very, yeah. what is, or who is, rather, your most inspirational person? Myself. My journey of myself. My journey of looking at myself in the mirror and trying to become better. I think that emotional intelligence of judging yourself is very, very important. I don't think we should concentrate and teach. If I'm terrible at math, I should not sit and learn math all day. I should always but try to correct myself and try to look at myself. I posted a beautiful sentence on Instagram, I think yesterday, that's saying, that's saying, what, let, let me read it. Yeah, check it out, check it I out. I love it, I love You have no soul. You are the soul. You have a body. And that that's what it. I do think that, yeah, that our soul is an ancient soul that is millions of years old compared to our stupid ego that in my case is fucking 39 years old, that is a 39 years old and I prefer listening as much as I can to my inner me. 
Mm -hmm. And I think that my ego is just a chauffeur. Yep. That he should fucking drive and the, the, the soul that sits or the spirit that sits at the back should make the decisions. And it's quite difficult because we all have egos and we all care about how we look like and I want that this video will do very well and people will watch it and so we all have those egos. Yep. But um, try as much as you can to feed you. And if you feed you, you are on the right track. And money, it's fucking bullshit. Fucking bullshit. We need two things in life. We need a roof under our head and food to eat. While you have that and you fulfill with your way, the rest would follow. I promise. That is probably the best way to finish. I love you. Yuri, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you didn't you. expect this, yeah? I didn't I didn't have any expectation. That was the point. You expected a business person sitting in front of you. I what I got today was perfect. I love you. Thank you so much.